All right. <clears throat> Welcome to today's chapter, Real Property and the Law. First thing I want to talk about is the fact that we are going to redefine some words today that most consumers use and that you uh, have probably used in your life as well. However, they're going to mean something different when dealing with someone that has a license. And you need to understand that when you hear a consumer say something or a buyer, let's use that word, you're going to have to kind of translate that into what they're talking about in our world because we have different words than the consumer would use. So let's get started. This is real property and the law. Today we're going to talk about um, the real property. We're going to talk about real estate. We're going to talk about all of these functions that we need to lay as kind of like the baseline. All right, so let's get started with the course. When it comes to land, you and I are going to have a different definition of what the word land means. So let's get started. Land is actually just going to be the dirt and the earth that comprises property. All right, so here we have land. And land also includes all of the naturally occurring plants that are upon it. So when someone owns land, they own the physical dirt and earth, plus they own to the heavens above and all the way to the center of the earth. This is the definition of land, all right? So when you and I talk about land, we are just talking about the physical dirt and earth that, that's there. Now, there are three factors that actually give land value or uh, <clears throat> presence for us, all right? The first one is immobility. We can't move land. It is where it is. The second factor is called indestructibility, all right? So you cannot destroy land. You can dig a hole in it, but you actually now own the hole and the, and the dirt still. And the next one is uniqueness. Uniqueness. There are no two properties that are the same. Mentioned that in a previous chapter, and I told you I'm going to prove it to you coming up. Um, now, the book loves to use the word non-homogeneity. This is one of their favorite words. Non meaning not, homo meaning the same, not the same. Now, let me give you a little clue on how the test is going to work. The test is not going to ask you a definition of what does this word mean, and you pick out four definitions. What the test loves to do is to use this word in place of uniqueness so that you understand and have to know what that word means in order to solve the question. So in essence, they're going to get two questions out of you because one is you have to know the definition and then obviously you have to know the answer to the question. So flashcards are something that I always recommend and you can go out on the web and buy flashcards. Uh, I believe Real University has flashcards, but I'm telling you nothing beats making your own flashcards. The simple fact of writing it down is a learning process, all right? Um, and then what I would do as a hint, and what I did when I started this 24 years ago, was on the back for the definition, don't write like the book's definition or Merriam-Webster's dictionary definition. Write what triggers your memory. So, you know, just like uniqueness on the back, put non-homogeneity, not the same, which by definition is unique, all right? So land is the first part. Now, I want you to kind of think of this like a math equation because we have land here. Oh, that's not going to work. 
we have land, then we have this thing called real estate. Now, what real estate is, is the land plus all of the man-made items that are on it. This has a word that we call an improvement. So real estate is nothing more than the land plus the improvements that are on the land. The, uh, the fence, the house, the sewer system, anything that is improving the value of that property, even mobile homes, would be considered an improvement, all right? So what you have now is real estate is land plus improvements. Now, there's a word in your book and in your notes that I want to talk about that is called an appurtenance. Appurtenance. It's in your book, it's in your notes. An appurtenance is a piece of real estate. It is an improvement that typically is not attached physically to that piece of land. All right, let me give you a couple examples. If you bought a condo on the 15th floor of a high rise, but you get a parking space in the basement of the building that comes with the condo, that parking space could be a call, considered an appurtenance. It is something that goes with the property, but it's not physically attached to it. Um, if you buy a house on the edge of the water and there is a dock in the water that goes with the house, that dock could be considered an appurtenance. If you bought a condo and it comes with, you know, gym membership and there's a pool and a tennis court, all of those as well can be construed as an impertinence. So those are go with real estate. They are typically not attached to that. Okay. Now, the third part of this equation. That didn't work out right. The third part of this equation is real property. Real property. So real property is the land plus the improvements plus all of the rights that come with that property. All right. And real property is actually the legal name that we use when you start filling out contracts. You will see that it's a purchase agreement for the real property located at. I know that most of us, including me, often interchange the word real estate to mean real property. But you need to understand that real estate has a definite definition, whereas real property has a different definition. Okay. So real property is the land plus the improvements plus all of the rights that come with that real estate and land, all right? Now, those rights, actually, there are a number of them. There are five, and they are often called the bundle of rights, and there are five of them, and each one of them is called a twig. Now, where this term comes from, just for you history buffs, in the old days of England, when they used to transfer ownership to property, there was a symbolic gesture where the owner would break a branch off of a tree, and he would hand that branch to the new owner, who would symbolically take that branch to actually show there was a transfer of ownership. So that branch or twig 
is symbolic, and that's where the term the bundle of rights or the twigs come from. You know, we still do that to this day, all right? Literally, only instead of using a twig, we actually now use a legal document called a deed where the seller hands it to the uh, buyer and the buyer takes it. Boop, that's the symbolic transfer or the, actually the realistic, maybe it's symbolic, it's not the right word. So there are five bundle of rights that come with real property. The first one, is the right of possession. The right of possession. That person has the right to occupy the property as the new owner. The second one is control. You have the right to control the property. You can do with it what you want. The third right that comes with it is called enjoyment or sometimes you hear quiet enjoyment, means that you are to be left alone by no third-party person unjustly trying to take your property. This stems back to what I was just saying, where the king might just come in and go, hey, I like this farm and I'm taking it, I'm the king, I can do that. Can't do that. But notice that I said the word unjustly take your property because there are just ways to take a person's property, which we're going to talk about throughout the rest of this book, okay? The fourth bundle, or the fourth twig of the bundle, is the right of exclusion. I can legally keep people off of my property that I want. I don't like you. I can keep you off my property. The third one, or the fifth one, <laughs> the third one, the fifth one <laughs> is the right of disposition. You can get rid of your property any way you see fit. Let's go back over here. So we got control, you got uh, exclusions on there. It keeps drawing the little arrow. You got exclusion, uh, possession, you have the right of disposition, and you have the, what was the other one? I lost my mind. Mm -hmm. That's right. The legal term is called quiet enjoyment or enjoyment. 